I'm an outdoorsman. And as far as possible, I like to live in harmony with the natural world. But I gotta tell you, those good relationships end just about here with this thorn bush. The first time thorns are mentioned in scripture, Genesis 3.18, they're mentioned as a consequence of sin. Uh, after the fall into sin, the Lord told Adam and Eve that as they gardened, as they grew their grain, uh, they were going to have to compete with these. And I suspect that every time Adam and Eve and any of their ancestors after them went to extract one of those thorn bushes from their garden, they felt the prick that reminded them of the fall into sin. Now here in Judas Hill Country, we've got two species of thorn that are the predominant species, the spiny broom and at its feet here, the, the prickly barnet, equally nasty. And uh, that brings me to a story that I suspect you know from the Passion of Jesus where thorns make an appearance. As the Roman soldiers prepared Jesus for execution, they constructed a crown of thorns, likely out of these two thorn bushes, either one or a combination of, of both, and they put it on Jesus' head, not to honor him, but to mock him. When I encounter the idea of thorns on Jesus' head, I'm transported all the way back to Genesis 3, and I'm reminded the consequences of sin linger around thorns. As Jesus was suffering and dying on the cross, he wasn't suffering and dying because he had done anything wrong. He was doing it because I had done things that deserved punishment. And as I look at him on the cross and I see the crown of thorns on his head, I'm reminded of this simple fact. That suffering is the price for our peace.